Mexico's peninsula. The Baja 1000. They all want to see what will go wrong. Because wrong will happen. And that's the challenge. Survive the terrain. Survive the bumps. Survive the dust. And try to win the 40-second running of the Takati Score Baja 1000. ATVs, trophy trucks, buggies, and motorcycles all through the desert to one finish line. Anyone who has ever put a foot to the pedal or twisted the throttle knows the lure of this place, the star with the one word name, Baja. How's it going everyone? Pat Parnell, your guide on this special edition of the NBC World of Adventure Sports for the 42nd running of the Takate Score Baja 1000. The granddaddy of all desert races, the Baja 1000, begins and ends here in Ensenada, Baja, California, Mexico. This year's event features over 350 entries from over 39 states and 14 countries to compete in 28 pro and six sportsman classes for cars, trucks, motorcycles, and ATVs. The two wheels take off first, the pro motorcycle class, with a big rivalry this year between Honda and Kawasaki. Both Honda factory teams have last-minute replacement riders with pre-run injuries, sidelining Johnny Campbell and Jeff Cargola. It is an old-fashioned duel with stacked teams in contention all around. And in the Baja 1000, anything can happen. It's an Ensenada showdown between JCR Honda and Kawasaki. Johnny Campbell is checking in with JCR Honda riders as they prepare for Honda's 20th overall win. Kawasaki hasn't been part of this for 13 years, and when Robbie Bell left, he took something with it, the 1X plate. Down here in Baja, you know, you have a rider of record who basically collects the points and has to start or finish each race. And so, you know, on Honda, I was the rider of record, so on paper, it was my number, so I was able to take it with me, which it allowed for me to come back down here on a new team this year, the Penn Hall Racing. So, Robbie Bell is off. And in the staggered start, two and a half minutes later, it's time for the JCR Honda A-Team, looking to defend their title. The first rider is Kendall Norman on 12X. He doesn't have the smoothest of starts, and in this race, seconds matter. And this is on the asphalt, the flat stuff, which is supposed to be easy. As for the Robbie Bell defection, Johnny Campbell knows it's business, it's free agency. The rider that acquired the 1X, of course, he didn't re-sign with us, and so that number, unfortunately, left our team. But in all, you know, every pit crew, every part of our plan and coordination is the 1X play. You know, it's not just one rider, because he can't do it all. It's a whole crew, it's a whole team, it's a family, and that's what it means. So, for the team, Kendall Norman heads into Ojos Negros for the first 40 miles of the race. He'll take it to mile 205 before handing off to Timmy Wygant. Then he'll pick up again at mile 500. This Baja course is about 673 miles long, and it's the 35th time they've started in Ensenada, 65 miles south of the U.S.-Mexico border. Everyone's all pumped up because the race covers some infamous ground, Laguna Salada, Mike Sky Ranch turnoff, and eventually the finish back in Ensenada. It's time for JCR's Honda B-Team, 18X, with Colton Udall on board. He'll take the first 100 miles of the race, then hand off to Brent Harden, and then brothers Matt and Max Eddy. It's a team. For our team, JCR has one strategy, and that's to win the race. And for me, I just want to do my best in my sections, and I'm hoping that the riders do the same. Back in front, Robbie Bell is flying through Ojos Negros before the big turn at El Alamo. The names are great in the Takati score Baja 1000. With no dust in his face, it has to be a great feeling. And this part of the course is obvious. Later, it's not so. And it's good to know when you get to that fork in the road, there may be some fans to point you in the right direction. So Robbie Bell's defection with the 1X badge to Kawasaki is working out well. 
Behind him, JCR rider Kendall Norman on the 12X is making his way through the same course. The question is, is he making up time while doing so? This is the Takati score, Baja 1000. And if there's dust in your face, it means you're catching up. Next in Ensenada, the four-wheel trophy trucks. Time for the big boys in Baja. From inside this 800 plus horsepower, purpose-built desert trophy truck, the train of the Baja 1000 might seem easily conquered, but with 32 inches of wheel travel for suspension, even that can't keep this ride from being insanely bumpy. Let's do this, Pete. And do this they will in Ensenada. In racing, everybody loves bigger, better, faster, stronger, tougher. And that's what the trophy trucks are all about. And when you come to the Baja 1000, you know you're not in Kansas anymore. The vehicles are sweet, and they come in all shapes and sizes, and colors and aspirations. Pistol Pete Shorin wants to win. All right, moment of truth has come. Start of the Baja 1000, ready to get it on. It's mid-morning in Ensenada, and Pete Shorin has drawn the chance to start first, and that's a big deal. You know, first off the line is a huge advantage down here in Baja. The first 100, 125 miles is a lot of single track. It's really dusty. Uh, if you start 30th, uh, you got to wait in line. There's not a lot of places to pass. So uh, starting out front is definitely a big advantage. It's often all about the dust. And next off the line is Rick D. Johnson in truck number 71. His navigator is Brian Sally. And he's counting on Pistol Pete to set a good pace, something that he can chase. Johnson no success here in Baja. He earlier won the Baja 500. This would make a perfect exacta. This is a family affair. Bobby Baldwin in Trophy Truck 96. He's third off. And his son, BJ, will join him on the course in Trophy Truck number one. And he's not far behind. This race is part of a five-race series, and the overall points leader is next, NASCAR's Robbie Gordon. Easiest place to pass people is in the pits, so if we can stop and get fuel quick, um, you know, somewhere even around the 50 or 60 mile marker, we'll do that, because when BJ stops, then we'll go by him. So uh, we just got a little floating strategy here, so we'll just pace it off that. Part of Robbie Gordon's MO is attack. At every turn, at every chance, Sometimes you wonder if the fans know how close they are to absolute peril. But that's Robbie Gordon. He's got it. To the navigator of the defending champion. It's going to be a good day. Larry's ready, and uh, the truck's in good shape. So we're going to go after it just like we did last year. Larry Rossler's at the wheel for the start. Roger Norman will take over at mile 395. It's back to the start line for racing veteran Cameron Steele. Unfortunately for me, I have to be 14th, but I'd rather be 14th than 35th. So it's a little bit tougher coming from the back in the dust. You know, I'm not all the way back, but at the Baja 500, I was not even this far back and I got stuck in a traffic jam. So bottlenecks in Baja are a tough part of it. This is not Cameron Steele's first rodeo. He knows that so much has to go right to win something like the Baja 1000. Every tire, every rim, every shock, every nut have to hold firm. And this is a team sport. Unfortunately, his teammate, his navigator, got sick right before the race, Cody Stewart. And so Jeff Laubscher is at his side. It's a family affair in truck number four. Gustavo Vildasola Jr. at the wheel. He's a Red Bull athlete from Mexico, riding with his dad. And not far behind the McMillan family, with third-generation Baja driver Andy making the start.
fans go to great lengths and heights to catch the best view of the race. In the motorcycle race, Robbie Bell continues to lead the way. The 1X bike leaves a trail of dust that you can see for miles. This is still the part of the course known as Ojos Negros. The dust stays airborne for a long time, and no one knows that better than Kendall Norman back in the 12X. He heads toward El Alamo after a 40-mile stretch through the Ojos Negros. And the dust ahead is a good sign. Kawasaki's Robbie Bell hits mile 82. After a turn east from El Alamo, he heads up through the summit towards a place called Cajabuzo Junction. Straight ahead, the flats of Laguna Salada, which will parallel Mexico's Highway 5. Kendall Norman on the JCR Honda 12X takes the whoops, and he continues his pursuit. It's a race of time. Everything's relative, and it's hard to tell who's in front and by how much. The Takati score Baja 1000 is a tradition here, and at the Borrego Pits, you see some things you don't see all the time. That's mile 205, and it comes after Santa Catarina and before San Felipe, which is all before a return to Ensenada. This is Larry Rossler, leading the trophy trucks in a cloud of dust, and dust is always the headline at Baja. It's dust, dust, and dust, and it can destroy your trophy truck. B.J. Baldwin, son of Bobby, they're both out of Las Vegas. And they're up near Larry Rossler. And you stay in this race until the last possible mile, because you never know what can go wrong to the trophy truck in front of you. Andy McMillan is known for running hard, and he's doing that once again. We've been down here since 1976 racing. My grandpa raced in every Baja 1000, you know, up until his death. And we're just carrying on the family tradition, and we're going to go win this one for him. And to Andy, there's no better incentive than continuing the family tradition. Check out this part of the course, negotiated by Truck 71, Rick D. Johnson. Who came up with that? Back to NASCAR's Robbie Gordon. And did we mention the dust? He's so far away from Talladega, it's ridiculous. Also part of the craziness, the Class 25 ATVs. The pro ATVs that started just after the motorcycles. The defending champion, Matlock Racing, and they fight their way through the dust. If things were clear, this would be complicated. But the dust compromises visibility. And when the turns start, there's another complication. And what goes up? must come down. JCR Honda's rider Kendall Norman knows that. He's in the shadow of the mountains with another 100 miles to go before he hands off to teammate Timmy Wygant at race mile 205. Kendall Norman and his team know the competition well. They know this course, and Norman knows that when he hands off to Timmy Wygand, Wygand will be ready. 
the Cali guys are going to be good. They have good guys, but I think we have more knowledge and we have a better structure of a team. Johnny's done this a million times. He's 11-time champion, and we have the best core of a team. So, you know, those guys are going to be good, but I think they need to work together more before they become a true champion team like we are. And that was a shortcut the team took there, but that's part of doing your homework and knowing where you can save seconds when possible. In the field of buggies, Cops Buggy number 1203 is sponsored by John Langley. There's just tons of great drivers out here. So a new guy like me, a rookie, I have to just try to finish the race and be consistent. You don't always win by being the fastest. You sometimes win by being the smartest. And I hope to be reasonably intelligent so I can finish the race. Because as everyone says, you cannot win if you do not finish. And with Langley on the edge, he reminds us that, that that is the biggest challenge in Baja. It could be a tire, it could be a thousand different things. But just over 50% of the vehicles that start finish the Takati Score Baja 1000. And anyone who wants to finish has to do so in under 31 hours. Andy McMillan continues to push it, as he always does. Starting later in the race, at least gives you many more targets to chase. And one of those targets for Andy McMillan is B.J. Baldwin at the gates. So all in the same neighborhood, B.J. Baldwin, Andy McMillan in hot pursuit, but they're all in danger of being passed in the standings by the Mexican favorite, Gus Vildasola Jr. in trophy truck number four. Right now, he's looking a little too hot to be caught. But in the Takati Score Baja 1000, every single fan, every single driver knows it. The end could come around the next turn. in Ensenada to the southernmost tip with its rugged mountains, the race varies from beaches to palm trees to ponderosa pine. And in the middle, lots of desert. And in the desert, mountains, rocks, hills, dirt, and thousands of fans. Many in various states of distress because it's not easy to be a fan at the Takati Score Baja 1000. For the fans or the riders, and they all know it. Charging hard for the second checkpoint of the race at Borrego is the local Ensenada rider Ivan Ramirez on Bike 11X. He will ride the entire race himself. And what's ahead? That's anybody's guess. Baja is just the unknown. You never really know. If there's a rancher coming out of his ranch or a cow or a dog or what could be around that next corner or what you're going to run into. There's a lot of things that could happen out there. Close to Ramirez is the team of Cameron and Kyle Korfman, Craig Smith and Aaron Tuck. It's Motorcycle 4X, and they're working hard to stay in the mix. Still leading the field into the pit at Borrego is the 1X bike of Robbie Bell. Kawasaki's return is looking good. It's almost an instant rivalry between Kawasaki and the team from JCR Honda. Meaning, Robbie Bell last year was with the competition, now he is it. I definitely learned a lot, you know, riding for Honda and, and, uh, and their program is solid. And so, I mean, it, they're, they're gonna be a tough team to beat, no doubt, we're not underestimating it, you know? But anything can go wrong, you know? There's a lot of stuff that can happen down here. You always gotta plan for the unexpected and prepare for the worst, but expect the best. We're on board the truck number eight of Larry Rossler. And yes, the Baja 1000 can be a contact sport. B.J. Baldwin hits Larry Rossler. 
And now it's not a matter of exchanging driver's licenses and insurance cards. It's a matter of trying to figure out how to get these things moving again. In the meantime, Andy McMillan says, excuse me, guys, this is a race, and I will take advantage. Cameron Steele was the first to pass the Baldwin-Rossler traffic jam, and now he's ahead of the crash, moving up through the mountains. But ahead of him, and all of them, is the Rick D. Johnson truck number 71. He's on the flats and flying. He's luckily gotten through the mountains before the crash and doesn't have to worry about any type of slowdown. Cameron Steele knows who he's chasing. The biggest factor is battling Baja, and luck plays a huge part of it because there's a lot of good drivers. There's 10 or 12 teams that could win it at any drop of the hat, but it's a matter of whether you're going to have the luck, the best team, everything going together, and of course the loose nut behind the wheel is usually the biggest problem, so you gotta, got to put it all together for a perfect day in Baja. And this would be a perfect moment at Baja for any driver. Cameron Steele in a side-by-side -side straightaway showdown with NASCAR's Robbie Gordon. This time, Steele wins it. Up ahead at race mile 205. Getting into the heart of Borrego, the bikes make their way to the second checkpoint, 10 miles ahead. Now riding the 1X bike, Ryan Penhall has just relieved Destry Abbott, who took over for Robbie Bell. Now Ryan will ride the next 100 miles before giving back to Robbie Bell. And the fans are all over the pits because there's so much action here. Timmy Wigand has just taken over from Kendall Norman on the 12X bike, which passes checkpoint two in Borrego, eight minutes behind the 1X bike. It's a good thing the riders are fresh, because here it is attack, attack, attack. Well behind Wigand and the other leaders is motorcycle 4X of Cameron Korfman on his way to Borrego, thinking what every other rider is thinking, that every single second gained or lost is precious. The 42nd running of the Takati score Baja 1000 continues, and there's a lot of activity in the Borrego pits. The 1X bike with Ryan Penhall aboard flies through. He's at mile 250. Timmy Wigand, not far behind. And as the 11X rider Ramirez takes an opportunity for a short break, the 18X with Brent Harden aboard whips right by. It's all part of what will be a 200-mile loop through San Felipe and through some of the most rugged terrain in the race. Then it's back to Borrego, with over another 200-mile run still to go north to Highway 3 and Mike Sky Ranch turnoff, the Pacific Ocean nearby, and then back to Ensenada. The trophy trucks make their way into Borrego for the first time through. The Juleson Pierce truck number 30 is in the dust of trucks up ahead. Being slightly more aggressive, truck number 71, driven by Rick D. Johnson. He just flies right on through the Baja pit staging area and doesn't care who gets dusted. And they all do. The bikes are in the thickest stretch of what they call the whoops. From race mile 350 to 380, it's an extreme part of the course, and caution is imperative. Robbie Bell is back on the 1X, and he tears it up. As he stops for gas, he has to know there's pressure from behind, applied by Timmy Wigand. This part of the course is nuts. Here's Colton Udall. The whoops are unbelievable. 
It's not so much what you're riding over, it's how long you're riding over them. It feels like after you're done, you feel like you've done 800 pull-ups. Once again, Robbie Bell is a man in motion. Back to the story of the trophy trucks, and Rick D. Johnson in Truck 71 leads the race. Word filters out that Pistol Pete Shorn, in his trophy truck number two, had engine failure at mile 160 and has dropped out of the race. Coming in seven minutes after truck 96 is Bobby Baldwin. It's a planned pit stop for him. And the crew goes to work. Also making a scheduled pit stop to add lights for nighttime driving is Cameron Steele. Pit strategy is planned out all year long. You know, a lot of people just come down for a week or so, but I spend four months a year in Baja riding motorcycle adventure trips, doing pre-run trips, just basically thinking about all the different things that can and will happen. So I planned out some of my strategies long before, even though I didn't even know what the course was all about. And then once they lay out the course, I try to outsmart my competitors. It's something you got to think about for the long term because, you know, we have 90 people down here. We have 14 stationary pits, and it takes a lot of work to put all that together. Cameron Steele's crew worked to put all that together. Bobby Baldwin, good to go. Back on the course, we see something interesting. It's the roar of Robbie Gordon who has repassed Cameron Steele. Gotta love payback. But for Cameron Steele, things are great. The truck is newly adjusted and feeling solid. Plus, he's gotten Cody Stewart, his navigator, back at mile 205. He's feeling better. So things are looking hopeful for Cameron Steele. That is until whatever may happen in the dust ahead. And there we find Larry Rossler, who has managed to untangle himself from B.J. Baldwin and that crash. B.J. Baldwin, on the other hand, busted his transmission and has dropped out of the race. So Rossler is in good position to defend his Baja 1000 championship. Meanwhile, at Team McMillan, in place of Andy, his father Scott behind the wheel. This is a second and third generation team, and the McMillan family is dedicating this race performance in memory of the original McMillan of Baja, Corky, who raced until shortly before he passed away at the age of 76 in 2006. Up next in the Takati score Baja 1000, something that can only be described in two words. Uh-oh. Nighttime. Nighttime in the Ducati Score Baja 1000, and everything gets a little bit more dangerous and complicated as all classes collide at all points and all over the course. Beams of light are a blur of a rider. ATVs are with motorcycles next to trophy trucks. And the fans have a lot of trust in the drivers. That's the truck of Team McMillan, and right now they're in front. Right behind the local favorites in truck four, Gus Vildasola and his dad, right in their tracks. So it's riders of all kinds, and Cameron Steele makes his way into Borrego for a planned rider change pit stop. Oh, 
His crew beckons him over. Cameron Steele will give way to Rick Geyser here. The rest will be welcomed. We had a great session. I mean, we were smart, played it smart, and uh, we almost made track position on Rob McCacker and Mark Post at the first pit, where I, that was the whole idea. You know, it was a good race, and the, the car is awesome. The tires are good. The guys did a great prep job. How the heck do they know where they're going is a legitimate question. The challenge now for the driver and navigator is to make sense of the chaos, find a way through the dust. Because nothing's going to change between now and the finish. This Takati Score Baja 1000 is going to finish at night. At first glance, in a few directions in Ensenada, you wouldn't be certain that something exciting was about to happen, but it is. It's the finish of the Takati Baja Score 1000. In the motorcycle division, this is going to be close. Climbing on at mile 500 for Robbie Bell's Team 1X and Kawasaki is Steve Hengevel. There is nothing about Baja that he has not seen or experienced. And as an experienced race rider, the moment he gets to the line and sees the checkered flag, he knows what the deal is. It's all about the clock. Kendall Norman climbed on at mile 500 as well. And he knows that this race is about keeping the tradition in the back pocket of Honda. They think they have it, and they do. The Baja 1000 is decided by 20 seconds. You know, we had really good competition. Uh, I really commend uh, the Kawasaki team for coming down and, and putting a great effort together. They pushed us all day. Um, and, and competition breeds excellence. So, you know, we're into uh, making things better and doing a better job. And, and uh, you've got to have competition to do that. So I couldn't be more pleased right now. Perfect. Speakers are all located. You know, but we we'll come here to win, you know, and uh, it's going to be close. Just got to look at the data boxes and see what happens. Finishing third on the JCR Honda Bike 18X is Colton Udall. And for Honda, this is their 20th Baja win. 1X is home. <laughs> the winning trophy truck at the finish line is truck number 31 of the McMillan family. And Andy McMillan will win the Baja 1000 to honor his late grandfather, Corky. They cover 673 miles in 14 hours, 19 minutes, and 50 seconds. Their margin of victory, 30 minutes. And they add a little flourish at the finish. Andy thinks Dad did a good job. My dad, you know, he doesn't give himself enough credit, but he hauls ass. And, uh, he's one of the best guys out here, that's for sure. So he did a great job, got the truck in the lead. Uh, I just got him a clean truck, you know, uh, no problems all day, not one flat. What more can you ask for? Then there's the story of the defending champions, Rossler and Norman, in truck number eight. They made a huge comeback after their crash with B.J. Baldwin. Now, Norman took over for Rossler at mile 395 and made up 30 minutes along the way. That is some impressive night driving. We lost our skid plate, and it was dragging on the ground, and I thought, oh, no, like, oh, the whole suspension's gone now. But we pulled over and stopped and checked it, and it wasn't, that, that's all it was. 
and then appearing out of the darkness were the bright lights of Rick D. Johnson. He would finish third in this 40-second running of the Takati score Baja 1000. But everyone in Ensenada feels enriched. Enriched by the knowledge that Corky McMillan used to come here in search of racing glory. And with him now gone, the tradition of the McMillan family continues for Andy and his dad. And so for a 40-second time, they gathered in Baja, and after 673 miles, here are the final standings in the Takati score, Baja 1000. Final thoughts after this. Man didn't outlive dinosaurs. They started from here at the Baja 1000. Those that made it back to the finish line down in Ensenada have met a huge challenge, and some exceeded it. For over half the field that didn't make it to the finish line, the race is only over until next year where once again the battle of all desert races will bring the world's hungry for another chance at a ride to glory. For everyone here at the NBC World of Adventure Sports, we thank you for joining us with this special edition of the Takate Score Baja 1000. We'll see you next time. Next time, they can't wait to tune up and line up with their vehicle of choice. Inhale the dust and race. Giving us one-of-a-kind pictures from a kidney bumping course over a place few of us will ever know. And that's the thing in Baja. You never know what will happen next.